Hi, I'm Bruce, and welcome once again to my Colorado Rocky Mountain Lab. And today we're going to take a look at a Philips PM6672 1 gigahertz high resolution timer counter. This thing is jam packed full of little uh, extras. Uh, for one thing, it's got the top of the line Philips time base in it, and um, which gives it ex very, very nice, extremely accurate um, measurement capability. Right now we're running using its time base, and as you can see, we've got about 499,999.99 hertz, plus or minus a digit, and... Um, the plus or minus digit that's pretty common in the counter, but right now we're back to all nines. And that's coming from this uh, PTS 500 up here, which is dialed in to exactly 499, 999, 999, okay. And, uh, and that's all running from a uh, rubidium calibrated time base that's up here in the corner. So I know she's running accurately. And it's matching my uh, my rubidium calibrated time base, um, plus or minus a digit, which uh, in this case would represent maybe 10 hertz out of 500 million. Impressive. It's a nice looking unit. It's in uh, very good shape, uh, considering its age and everything. It's uh, the case looks good. We got a little bit of paper on here. Let's get that off of there. Okay. Case looks good, got a little bit of dent here and there, but uh, uh, not much in the way of scratches. Um, the lens is nice and clear. You can see a little shine off of it there. The uh, stand is working good. Got all the rubber feet. And here we get a good look at the rear end of it. We see that we have um, uh, external input. Um, we can go either external or internal on the time base. We can choose uh, arming, frequency average. We talk about an included option. I believe that's the, uh, the 9691 uh, that would be the time base. And uh, where you have a place for the 115 or 220 selection and so on but very nice looking unit working very well you know when you're looking for a uh, frequency counter uh, first thing you should be looking for is 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 it um, stable does it give me an accurate frequency uh, representation so your time base is really uh, important there, and certainly here, with a top of the line uh, OCXO, you're you're getting a very accurate time base. And then uh, the last consideration, since most of them start at like 80 megahertz and go up, would be the frequency range. Uh, if you uh, want to make sure that you have uh, enough range for your bench, then you're going to want to go, you know, a gigahertz or more these days but um, I'll tell you the truth uh, majority of the time you're not going to work in a gigahertz range you're going to work uh, you know somewhere under a hundred megahertz most of the time but that's just uh, it doesn't mean you don't want to have the capability because who knows when you do want to measure something like that and then beyond that I mean you look at all of the other features we've got uh, filters we've got uh, an A and B channel 120 megahertz here you compare to B when you do uh, uh, comparison of um, of counts you do periods you do averages between A and B ratio of A to B so if you have a known you put one in on the, uh, put the known in on say B and you compare A to it um, if you go in on channel C you're working on the 1 gigahertz channel which I am right now we're measuring 500 megahertz uh, actually 499 all nines um, and then uh, one of the features of the Philips counter which is really nice is that you can you can adjust your measuring time to give you more resolution 
just by uh, by changing a dial. Like right now, if I want to go to a second, one second reference here, I, I'm updating once a second. Um, but in doing so, you lose one of your digits. So I'm reading right now uh, 500 megahertz. Uh, so that would be down to, um, oh, you know, like a thousand hertz. Um, if I wanted to increase my resolution, I can go up to a, a longer count and it should kick me up like it just did. So now I've got uh, maximum resolution on the counter and I can see that I've got, I've got my measurement to exactly where I want it anyway. So it's a nice unit, um, beautifully maintained, it's working well. Um, well. We'll give it some testing here. All right, right now we're set at the 499 and all nines uh, point. Let's go to 399. And let's, uh, let's also change our time base so we don't have to wait 10 seconds for an update. There's 399 and all nines. There's 299 and all nines. 199. This would be uh, 99 and all nines. And then at this point, I'd have to change from C to A because now I'm going to drop below the 70 megahertz range and I want to change to the A channel there we go and right now we're at 99 and all nines and we're gonna take uh, all those nines to zero We'll leave it there for now. And here we are at 90, 99 megahertz, 89 megahertz, 79 megahertz, 69, 59, 49, 39. We're getting the gist here. 19. All right, now we're at 9 megahertz. We could actually turn the resolution down a little more and, and get a little faster response at this point. And uh, here's 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Here's nine thousand. Actually, nine hundred thousand. Let's go uh, nine hundred ninety thousand. It'd be nine hundred ninety nine thousand. Eight hundred ninety nine. Seven hundred ninety nine. 699, 599, 499, 399, 2, 1. Okay, so now we've gone down on the other end of the spectrum and we're looking at uh, low frequency signals. Right now we're looking at 2 hertz, 2 hertz that's coming from, from this uh, HP 3320B. Um, dialed in two and we are measuring 2.0 zeros roughly um, and you'll notice it takes uh, several seconds for the time period here the computer inside has already looked at the frequency and determined that you need a longer uh, uh, measuring time in order to be able to get this frequency with any resolution so it 
it increases our measuring time automatically and then displays 2.0000 hertz. Now if I dial down to 1, we're going to have to give it a, a few seconds to, uh, to gate. Here's the gate coming on. When the gate goes off, we should be able to see it drop. And then the second time we get a full gate, here's 0.99997. So there's your 1 hertz. And uh, we'll get another gate here in a minute, and it'll, it'll update. There's the gate going on again. So we have the facility to measure extremely low frequencies, uh, almost a DC, if you can generate it and then all the way up to uh, a gigahertz and we'll check the gigahertz here in a minute using uh, something that will produce that kind of a frequency we went up to 500 here a few minutes ago but we'll have to double that all right so we can see that we're measuring frequency accurately and we're covering a large spectrum let's hook up the uh, HP 8640B here and we'll we'll generate a gigahertz Okay, we've uh, hooked up our HP 8640B. We're using a, uh, a doubler on it. We're measuring 500 megahertz, 500.09 thereabouts. But doubling that, it's over a gigahertz, and we are reading 1000.06 megahertz, so it's a little over a gigahertz, as expected. And if I was to try and dial this thing, whoops. Very sensitive. There's 500.01 and we're getting 1000.01, thereabouts. So we're reading over a gigahertz. I can kick this thing up a little more. Here we can see that we've reached uh, 1.05 gigahertz. And uh, anything beyond this amount, uh, we might be able to read it, but it's... Uh, uncertain that the uh, time base can handle it and it'll start to get unstable we can we'll take her up just to see what we do but I'll demonstrate what I mean by the time up ah, there the time base is locked up the gate is locked up and our and our frequency is set and that's about 1051 so we're good over a gigahertz uh, 1.05 and our gate should start flashing here in a moment. There it goes. All right. So we've got the check button pushed in, and what that check button does is it takes a look at the output of the time base and displays it and right now it's saying that I've got um, 10,000.000 megahertz um, coming out of that so no I'm sorry kilohertz 10,000 kilohertz so that would be 10 megahertz and um, we've got a reset button which resets the count starts the whole thing over in case you lock up or something. If you want to display, hold the display, you can press the hold display and then it doesn't matter whether you're in check mode or not. We're still holding that signal until I release it. We've got an attenuator for times 10 for the input. Um, okay, so here the signal's coming in on channel A and I've got it um, adjusted so that I'm reading 111 megahertz, uh, but I'm right on the edge of being able to read it as far as amplitude goes. If I push in the attenuation button, the gate stops timing, the whole thing locks up, there's just not enough input for it to be able to work on. So if I remove the attenuation button, then we see it go back to measuring like normal. It's just an indication that my attenuation button is working here. Definitely attenuating the signal. Um, let's try uh, a different... Let's try a period measurement. We're going to try a period measurement for 
a low frequency. Here we have ourselves in the period of A and we see that we are getting uh, about a hundred um, milliseconds displaying on there. Uh, since we're in milliseconds that's thousands of a second so 100 over a thousand is one-tenth. So we're one-tenth of a full second which is the reciprocal of it is 10 Hertz and we are actually set for 10 Hertz on the unit so we are reading our uh, period accurately. Let's try something else. Okay, we're now we're measuring the RPM of A and we're getting a reading of 600, 599.99 and a little extra to 600. And uh, and that's 600 revolutions per minute. There's 60 seconds in a minute, so right now I'm putting in a 10 hertz signal, that's 10 per second. Um, 60 seconds times 10 would be 600, so 600 RPM, 600 cycles, yes. So I'm measuring the uh, RPM accurately. If you were, say, feeding a um, signal from a photocell circuit in here and looking at uh, a light and dark reflection off a fan perhaps uh, and you were getting this reading then your fan would be working would be rotating 600 times in a in a minute all right well the rpm is working let's uh, try something else okay so we're measuring the um, pulse width of A and we've got a 10 hertz signal coming in and we're reading 49.9596 milliseconds for our pulse. Uh, if this is a hundred millisecond pulse because that would be 10 hertz but we have half of it going high and half going low that'd be 50 uh, milliseconds high and 50 milliseconds low so my pulse width would be 50 milliseconds. We're getting 49.95 to the 97, somewhere in there. So we're reading the pulse width accurately. If I go to count A with my 10 hertz signal, I see that it's just counting pulses now. And we'll keep on going until I stop or reset. So that's working. Uh, now we have the next thing to do would be to show you the ratios of A to B where we're going to start using B as a uh, as some kind of a reference standard we'll do that okay at this point we're in uh, ratio of A to B and we're getting a ratio of 50 on A we have a um, a 500 uh, kilohertz signal coming in and on B, we have um, a 10 kilohertz signal. <coughs> so 500 over 10 is 50, and we have 50 on display. If I was to change my kilohertz to um, 1 kilohertz, then it's 500 over 1 or 500. And if I go uh, over 0.1, we'd be 5,000. So we're developing the ratio of A to B without a problem. Uh, about the only thing left to look at would be the average of A to B, and I've got to figure out what the heck that even means. Okay, so we're checking a feature that I really haven't used much. However, it does exist, so we're going to test it out. And uh, what it is, it's the time interval. And uh, right now we are on time interval averaging from A to B. And it measures the time elapsed between two pulses. A pulse on A and a pulse on B. And uh, in order to make that happen easily here, what I've done is I've fed a signal from a little signal generator here that's uh, digital and, uh, and allows me to generate pulses. And I've sent a, um, oh, I don't know, one nanos, 
thousand nanosecond pulse um, to channel A, and then I've also run it to channel B using this little little loop here. And then on B, I change the slope. So when the um, when A goes positive, and then you know finishes its signal and then falls, B will rise. So the time between the uh, when A rises and then B rises, that's the time interval I'm measuring. So right now, I've got um, 0 0.01 kilohertz, uh, that would be a 10 hertz signal. And I am measuring uh, 99.7 milliseconds on there. Uh, if I was to uh, increase it, there's 2. It should fall from 100 to 50, which 49.7, it basically did. Let's go the other direction. Here's a, um, uh, a 5 hertz signal, and we're getting a about 200 millisecond uh, gap in there. So that would be right for 5 hertz. Let's go to 1. And we should get like a thousand milliseconds, 999.7. So the function is working. I just wanted to show you that it is. Uh, if you were in a situation where you needed to measure two distinct pulses, uh, you could do it. So there you have this little beauty. And um, along with it, I'll be including the power cord, of course, and the... Um, uh, service manual on the diskette um, use with your computer so uh, happy bidding and thank you for listening next time bye